Hey guys, Theron Asbury here with Revital Outdoors, bringing you another exciting podcast. Tonight, we're going to go to the great state of Texas. We're going to interview an absolute legend in the state of Texas. He has qualified for the Forestwood Cup. He currently fishes the Bassmaster Opens. He's qualified for multiple Toyota Series championships and Costa Series championships. He's just shy of $500,000 in winnings. He's he's done it all in the state of Texas. He's a legend in his own you know game there in Texas. He's You cannot escape talking about Texas fishing without talking about this man. We're going to bring him in just a minute. Before we get started this evening, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, like the uh, video tonight. That way you get notified when all of our content is dropping. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We're Revital Outdoors. And then if you're interested in Revital Outdoors, we sell all of our products on our website, www.revitaloutdoors.com. We're a premium CBD company, which is great for all the outdoor enthusiasts, THC free, made right here in America. So check out our website. So very, very excited for this podcast tonight. Let's go ahead and bring him in. Mr. Todd Castledine from Texas. How are you doing this evening, bud? What's going on? Not much, not much. Well, you know, we've got a BFL tournament coming up with the Cowboy Division in a couple of uh, couple of weeks on Sam Rayburn. You've got a lot of history on Rayburn. You've won five events with Major League Fishing, four of which have been on Rayburn. So, man, just tell us a little bit. What makes Rayburn so special? Man, it's it's just one of those lakes that I mean, there's there's probably like two or three of them across the country, and Rayburn's one of them. And it, it's just there's a little a lot of things. I mean, it has a lot of history, right? With a lot of big tournaments, uh, you know, Bass has been going there for years. FLW's now like starting to go there almost every year, like the MLF stuff or like the bigger the bigger events. And it, what's crazy is is a lot of people don't know this. There's more tournaments on Rayburn than any lake in the country. Uh, really? We average over 300 tournaments a year. Uh, I'm sure people are out there going, wait a minute, you only got 52 weeks. Well, exactly. That's how many tournaments are on the same day, Saturdays and Sundays. I mean, this isn't, we're not talking like little Thursday nighters either. We're talking about like fairly big events. And that was a long time ago. I'm, I'm sure that actually number is bigger because of the amount of high school stuff and college stuff going on. Um, I mean, they just had three college events in a row. Um, over the past weekend, along with some other stuff. So it, it's just it's just one of those lakes, and it shells them out. Like, I think, I mean, they're, uh, it's like 20, it's over like 23 to 24 pounds, no matter what tournament it is, like almost year-round to win. So, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. It's it's by far the best tournament lake in the country, and the, and the numbers prove it. Absolutely. You know, and I have to tip my hat, first, before we get too far into it, I have to tip my hat to... Uh, the Texas resources and wildlife management, because they obviously take care of all their lakes, but I think they have a honed in um, interest into Sam Rayburn and Toledo Bend both. Um, and it just shows for itself. I mean, that's a lot of tournaments. I remember fishing a couple of college events there um, back when I was in college and we would have, you know, hundred to 150 boats in our tournament. And there would still be two or three other tournaments on the lake that had over 150 to 200 boats. And I mean, but it's still, you're right, it shells them out, I mean, in year-round. It doesn't matter. It's obviously really good in the winter and spring, but there's 20-pound bags that are really caught on Rayburn year-round. So, um, you know, I have to ask, uh, have you been on the lake so far this year? And, and if you have, what's the grass doing? Yeah, so um, I, I've been on the lake. We had a, a Toyota event there. We had some other local events. I fished some of them. Um, and the the grass is the grass when it when we had the flood it killed it most of it and there's grass growing in and like for the most part most of the grass is growing in like a five mile section of the lake um there's other grass like little bits of it starting to pop up here and there luckily we haven't had any rain this year it's really super clear and the lake's low clear for rayburn so not only like 10 foot but clear for rayburn and it's starting to grow in some places. Um, and when I say grow, like just, I mean, little bits of, you know, little bits of it, but that's all we need. And if it stays like it is, that stuff will grow fast. I mean, it's a fertile lake. So uh, it, it'll get, it'll get going. It'll get going again. It doesn't matter either because even though there's no hydrilla, usually when the lake gets down, pads, pepper grass and everything else will start to take over. So it, it'll be fine. 
So for the vegetation anglers, there's still vegetation in the lake to go target. Yeah, there's still there's still plenty of grass. And like I said, I mean, with it being low and clear, um, the grass that's there is growing is growing fast. So I mean, it's it's going and it, it's going to spread quickly. I mean, it already it, it's just that's just how that place goes. So yeah, and not like you know, there you can still catch them shallow. There's they'll still be caught shallow. Like it'll be all right. Okay. Okay. So, you know, this tournament coming up next couple of weeks, BFL tournament, first and foremost, how much weight do you think it's going to take? Uh, when is it? Uh, it's uh, two weeks from now, the first part of April. Um, so, so what's crazy is it might be some of the best fishing that, but it might be one of the lowest weights of the year. Um, and I'll be honest, I mean, we've, we've caught them that time of the year. I probably won more tournaments in, late March to April than any other time of the year. And we usually catch some big bags. I'll be honest, a lot of that sight fishing. So um, if, if that's the only way they'll probably be a big bag, there will not be probably a big bag weighed in. And I say big bag, there probably won't be a big 25 pound bag to 30 pound bag unless just fishing. It, it gets hard. The live scopers, it takes them out. It takes a lot of, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you the other thing. They haven't really started spawning yet. I mean, they have, but they just keep on getting knocked out. So if a big, big push goes to spawning, you'll see the uh, least amount of weight. Okay. Okay. That would lead me to my next question is where are we at on the spawn? Um, and do you predict it could be just full out or if they don't you know, oh, get in the No, it'll be full out. Um, and But like I said, some of those, some of the tournaments we used to win when it was full out weren't that big of weights. I mean, really? well, a lot of those tournaments that you even talked about, I won them with 20, 21 pounds. Um, some of them more, but yeah, it becomes hard. And um, when, when they all go push, uh, depending on the day and stuff, I mean, if you can't really, if you can't look at them, it just becomes a hard way to catch them. Uh, Rayburn mm -hmm. and Toledo are both like that. Most lakes are like that. Like when lakes get really, really tough, um, it usually means they hit the bank and, and they go to spawn it. And it's actually not, the, it's a lot, real easy to catch fish. It's hard to catch those big bags because they all spread out. And so, I mean, you take a lot of the, there's no deep fish. There's no live scoping. There's no, it takes a lot of things out. So uh, it usually only makes one, one way to catch them one or two ways, you know, and, and those usually aren't ways to go catch giant bags. Okay. So talking about, you know, fishing up shallow, um, would you be just looking at them or would you just be flipping cover and, you know, in the, maybe the dirtier water and then hope to run into one that you think I, would be on a bed? I mean, I was a sight fisherman, so I, I just went and looked for them. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I, I'll be honest for years, man. I, I, if I couldn't look at them, I don't think I'd know how to catch a fish on that lake. I mean, I'll be honest, like, like I almost had to reteach myself how to fish in the springtime when, you know, you get a day that's like super cloudy and blowing 20, um, you know, that's, you got to go fish for them. And so there's other ways to catch them. But like I said, I mean, you might go catch 50 fish, but you might only have like 15 pounds. It's just hard right. to catch big ones. And so, uh, but yeah, like the dirty water, like you really just get in the same places. It's really mm -hmm. fun fishing though. Like you can catch them, man. It's just trying to, trying to come across a 10 pounder. Like it, they're so spread out. It's just really hard to catch multiple big fish that time of the year. Right, right. So, you know, I think a lot of anglers really overthink Sam Rayburn. When you're talking about fishing shallow site fishing, you're going to be using the same baits that you would any other lake in the country. Yeah, I mean, I know I sight fish. I, I throw the same bait no matter where I go. The right. exact same. I, I mean, I throw a rage bug on every lake in the country when I sight fish. Uh, there's there's a lot. I mean, I hear all these things about drop shot, all these different things. I'm like, I throw the same bait everywhere I go. I mean, right. literally the same the same setup it, the, nothing ever changes so yeah i mean I, I think i think this is the one time of the year like you can do a lot of stuff on rayburn and people are starting to figure this out but uh this that time of the year yeah i mean it you start you can look up and not have that many rides on the deck in in and you're going to be fine okay okay i gotta ask you know i, I know you more of a, as a power angler but do you still throw a spinning rod on on rayburn um I throw a spinning rod a lot now anyways. Uh, I, I kind of had to figure that out on tour. So on tour, I just kind of, 
I mean, I would see, I would see, I would have big days on the tour. Like I was really good about catching a giant bag on one day and not being able to like do it the next. And I was just, <clears throat> you know, my background of fishing wasn't like a lot of people's, you know, a lot of people started and, and like once they had success, went straight to the tour. I didn't do that. I, I think I had a lot of success regional regionally and stayed there. And a lot of it was fishing team tournaments. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can't go out there. I'll be honest. Like, I don't know how many tournaments have ever been won on a spinning rod on Rayburn in a one day event. Well, I didn't want to go out there and try to finish 15th place. Right. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't be fishing right now because I wouldn't have made any money. 15th place is great on tour. 15th place in a team event. Even if it has 300 people, you're winning like a thousand bucks. You're not going to uh, break even. Yeah. I mean. So, so you had to constantly, like I had to teach myself to like go for giant bat, like go all in. And then on tour, I did that, but then it backfired a lot. Right. I mean, or it just, it just was what it was. And so I got better with the spinning rod, learned how to do it, learn. And so now, yeah, I throw it in there. Like I have a spinning rod on my deck every single tournament for the past three years. Um, I'm not saying I'm the best with it, but um, I will use it. And I like I have a lot of confidence in it. Like, it, like it's not a big deal anymore. Right. Right. So, OK. Well, Todd, I really appreciate you coming on board. And, and probably you're one of the best anglers we could talk to for like Sam Rayburn. But before we let you go, I know you got a lot of people that support you. Great family, great sponsors. So anybody you'd like to thank, anything else you'd like the listeners to uh, to know about Todd Castleman before you get off? We just want to give you that opportunity. Well, I mean, like I said, uh, um, you know, uh, I, I owe a lot of my success, you know, right now to Strike King and Lose. Uh, they've been they've been real helpful, actually bringing me on the team now, and and now I'm developing baits for them. Uh, like, it, it's been a it's been a dream job that I didn't realize was a dream job, right? I didn't know this was going to be a job. Like, I heard, I knew someone had to have done this, like had to have made baits i just didn't know who actually it was so i kind of got thrown in this position um phil marks gave me the opportunity and then strike king is is going a long way and so they really helped me out so i, I appreciate i appreciate them still letting me kind of turn fishing into this other other avenue uh of innovation with baits like that's kind of my that's kind of my my uh stick thing so uh yeah them and uh like i said uh I got a, my YouTube channel that I, I started only because of FLW, right? FLW, when I got on, they made me get a camera and I barely knew how to turn that thing on. Um, they used to make fun of me because, I mean, I knew nothing about it, how to go buy a computer, all this stuff. And now, like two years later, um, you know, I'm putting out videos, you know, twice a week and figured it all out. And so, uh, yeah. If you want to go check out some of them, I try to do stuff different guys. I try not to be the regular old YouTube guy. Um, I'd never wanted to be that guy, whatever that I'm not, I'm not dogging. I'm just saying like, I try to make it as real as possible from a true fisherman that fishes on tour and tournament stuff like that. That's what I tried to bring. Um, not a lot of other stuff. So if y'all know what I mean. <laughs> You focus on fishing. I'll just say it right here, clear. You you focus on fishing. You give the information that is actually helpful to anglers and, and really just kind of dives into your lifestyle as an angler. And I mean, it's it's truly it's helpful and it's just raw, you know, raw material as real as it gets. You know? Yeah, I try to be as real as it gets. And like I said, fishing is always for like when people ask me about the YouTube stuff and cameras, I'm like, hey, look, I forget sometimes it's on. Fishing will always be first, YouTube second. But then I try, you know, but that's just, that's the only way to make it real. So I'm not going out there trying to make YouTube videos. I just fish and then figure out how to make a video after that. So Absolutely. it's been it's been pretty cool. I've enjoyed it. I really like it. Cool. Before we let you go, um, one last question. What are you fishing this year? I know you're still fishing the opens. Are you fishing them all or? Yeah, no. So um, I'm, I'm fishing the Central Division. I'm fishing the Southwest Division of the Toyotas. I mean, even this year, I think um, – I think I fished like five Bass Champs. I fished the TXTT. I fished the Brandon Belt Tournament. I fished the, I mean, we just got back from LBJ. We did back to back Bass Champs at LBJ. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I got, what's the next weekend? A TXTT on Cedar Creek. So, I mean, I pretty much have a tournament. I've, I'll probably have a tournament for the next four months every weekend, sometimes two a weekend. Um, I'm just fishing. It's kind of like what I used to do, man. I just fish whatever's in front of me. 
I got you. I got you. So, and you fished a long time and made a lot of money in Texas before you made that leap to fishing regionally or even nationally, you know, when you made that tour. So, uh, well, Todd, it's been an honor having you on with our podcast, Revital Outdoors. Um, for everybody listening, make sure you follow Todd Cassidy on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Check out his YouTube channel. Give him a subscribe as well. He's got like 20,000 followers and he gives great information uh, as real as it gets. So uh, please check out Todd and follow him. From all of us at Revital Outdoors, thank you for tuning in to another podcast. God bless, be safe, and we'll talk to you on the next podcast.